Do you have a side? Is that your good side? Okay. Well, your part is on that side. Does I, that mean that's your I know, your good but side? I'm more bald on the part side, so I buck that rule and I just do this side. Okay. Please, everyone, sit down. <laughs> that is too much. A standing ovation, Rue. I love it. Look at you. You've outgaged me with your outfit today. Yes, I'm mad. I certainly have. I'm mad. You're full on. I certainly have. Spring is busting out all over. Yeah. Have you ever seen that Leslie Egg Uggams thing on YouTube where she's singing that song but forgets all the words to I, it? I think I have seen Yeah, it's that. so good. Something for the kids something at home if you're at your computer. For young people. Look how young you guys are. I know. Uh, you're you just... just covered in afterbirth. Yeah. So young. <laughs> uh, welcome to our discussion with the one and the only RuPaul Charles. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm your host, Leslie Uggams. They don't know who Leslie Uggams is. I don't, I'm not even sure I know who Leslie Uggams oh is. Oh my goodness. She's you, a musical actress. She's a Broadway was musical she in actress. She The Wiz. She was not in The Wiz. But you know what's funny is that, you know, Get was TV. She in the remake of The Wiz on no, NBC. No, she was not. Okay. But you know, uh, Get TV, Antenna TV, and Me TV, they're showing all those old shows. Okay. And so she was on Merv Griffin. I love uh, Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin, the other, uh, the other last week, and it was like oh. it was, it was like Lainey Kazan, Merv Griffin, uh, Phil, Phil Spector. Oh, and they Moms were, Mabley. And they would have those two people. They were like uh, health food people, but they looked so terrible. Yes, uh, exactly. Harvey and Marilyn Diamond, fit for life. Fit for life. Sorry, we're having a private conversation. Yeah, yeah. That people that lived in the '80s would talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway. Um, so, a hundred episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race premiering tonight on Logo. I don't love Yes, you can applaud. How does that happen? I don't all know how that lasted happens. for a hundred episodes. Well, you know, I've been in show business for just under three hundred years. Okay, I thought so. Yes, I thought so. and you know, I, I tell this to kids all the time. And we were talking about this backstage. It's stick with stick with itness. Yep. It's luck, but it's also ambition and not burning bridges. You know, I've been working this, this block here for a long time, and right. what ends up happening, especially for you young kids out there, is that keep in mind the people, look around you, those are the people you're going to be working with for the next 30 years. In fact, the producers of RuPaul's Drag Race, right. I, I met them right here in, in the East Village 30, no, 31 really? years ago. And I'm still working with them, you know? World of wonder, if you're World of wonder. wondering. Yes, if, if you're, you're wondering. You're worlding. <laughs> um, how did Drag Race even start? I mean, like, where did the idea, did you have the idea? Did you take it to the producers? How does that process happen while we're, you know, walking down memory lane? Well, um, World of Wonder had been doing reality television for many, many years, and they wanted me to do it. Now, I thought it was, I didn't want to do reality because I thought it was mean-spirited. Now, this right. was in the 90s. They, they were doing reality TV. And um, I took some time away from the business, like from... 99 till about 03, 04, I stepped away. I wanted to just live my life some. And when I came back, uh, they said, are you ready to do reality? Right. And I've never been ready to do reality, by the way, uh -huh. uh, because I'm, I love the fantasy, you know? Right. Um, so uh, Tom Campbell, who's over at World of Wonder, who I've known for many years also, came up with the idea of a competition reality show that is like a drag race, that is literally... The, the, the pun of it being a drag race. Right. And it was Tom's idea. And then, um, but they had been after me for, to do something for many, many years. Well, it wouldn't be RuPaul's Drag Race without RuPaul, so I'm no, glad you did it. No, it would not be that, no. Um, now, and then did go, going even back further, I mean, when did you first, you know, when did you start in showbiz and how? And then you were a supermodel and then you had a talk show and then you had a recording, like, you've had a lot of, different careers within showbiz. So like, when did you first get the itch and be like, hmm, I think I want to be an entertainer, which I think is what... Well, I like to refer to myself as an entertainer. Entertainer with yes. a T. Yes, exactly. A T. When did yeah. you first start? Well, you know, when you, when you talked about that, I was thinking about Jane Fonda and how she's had so many lives in one lifetime. And I love that idea because people live longer, you know, and so you, you got to be prepared to do a lot of different things. Right. At, at any given time. But, you know, when I was um, a kid, my mother, everybody told the story that she, when she was pregnant with me, she had seen a psychic and that the psychic said, uh, it, it's going to be a boy and he's going to be famous. So I grew up. Really? Yes. 
So I grew up with this idea that I was going to be famous. Right. And so I didn't know how, I didn't know what, but I was in children's theater and I did, you know, shows in the backyard, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then finally... You were like the little rascals exactly. putting on productions. Do you, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> but that's exactly right. And uh, finally, after I left uh, high school, I got into a band. Okay. And we started doing, uh, you know, punk rock in, at the club and all that stuff. And uh, once we, as a gimmick, we all got into drag just to see, you know, right. just to do it. But the reaction I got when I got into, and this was gender F word drag. This right, is, right. you know, smeared lipstick, combat boots and, you know, ratty clothes. It was Ratchet. commentary. Ratchet drag. I think that's what the young people say. Yes. So uh, we did that, and the reaction I got from people was, was pretty incredible. I'd never had that reaction before. And I said, oh, I'm going to make note of that, you know? Right. And then one thing led to another, and years later, I, th I thought, well, I'll use this as my, as my vehicle. Right, and, right. And that's, that's really how it started. Fantastic. Yeah. And then how, did the, how did the music stuff happen? I mean, originally well, you were in a band, and then... You the have like music, a number one single. Well, the music was always a part of my thing. Music has always been the place I found my refuge. You know, I was always a, a weird little kid who, um, who would read album cover liners. You know, and really? you know, all. Of, in fact, we just drove past Electric Lady Studios, which is right down here on on Eighth mm -hmm. Street, and it is legendary. And I get chills every time I I go by there because so many right. great great albums were produced. In fact. Electric Lady is where I met Taylor Dane the first time. Who's who I have a duet with her on my latest. Tell it latest to my heart. Album. Tell it to my. That only told half the story. Right, right. By the way, uh, but uh, she's we duet together. Uh, that's what duet means, you know. Um, the French for two. Yes, um, on my new album, Butch Queen, and uh, with great song. Oh, but I met us, her at L Electric Lady. But tell us about the new album, by the way. Butch Queen is out right now on Amazon, and uh, uh, and is it like a real CD? Could you actually get something in the mail, or is it just a download? And then you get <laughs> a mysterious email from Apple saying. You owe us eleven ninety nine. Right, right. No, it is a download, but at DragCon, we yes. will have physical CDs. What Drag is this DragCon you're speaking well, of? Well, DragCon is a drag <laughs> is a convention that is happening in Los Angeles, California, C City of Angels, um, on May. Seventh, I believe and it's eighth. seventh and eighth. That's a Saturday seventh and, and Sunday. Yes, it's a huge convention. Last year was the first time we we had fifteen thousand people. Right. We have already more than doubled in ticket sales this year. I heard. I saw estimates like maybe like a million people are yes, going. Yes, uh, two million. Two people. million. Yes, yes. yes. We'll be attending. So it's going to be a big hit. And what goes on there? They meet their favorite drag stars. It's they meet you. Exactly. It's it's the drag race experience brought to life. You remember Snoopy on Ice? Yes, Do you I remember love that? Snoopy on Ice. <laughs> yes. Well, this is like that, but it's drag queens, no ice. Right. It's like com. It's like Comic Con, but people aren't as quite as weird. Yes. Um, I'm looking at the season eight queens. Um, yeah. That's a fantastic photo, by the way. How fun and fresh and gorgeous. So, what are we? Um, what are we looking forward to this season? Well. <laughs> Funny question, because the thing is this, you put drag queens in anything, and right. it's going to take on a life of its own. And I True. get asked the question all the time, like, what to expect this season? Mm. Hilarity, Carson. Hilarity. Okay. Hilarity calamity. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the T's. Okay. Are, are all gonna the be, T's and none uh, of the shade. None of the shade. And some of the shade. Some of the shade will be there. But it's crazy. This show has been going on for so long, 100 episodes. It's outrageous. It's crazy. You add drag queens to any situation. And of course, their backgrounds as you know, uh, lone wolves, right. really comes out and and brings a whole nother narrative to the situation. I just love it. We need one it. of those at the uh, Republican debates just to spice things up don't a little bit. We. Why yeah. don't we? Why can't Alaska Thunder work there? Yes. Or, I know you can say bad words on this AOL business, but I just can't do it. I can't do it either. No. But Or why don't they do a lip sync for their lives? The candidates... Thank you. <laughs> Last night, we asked you to prepare a lip sync version of the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> this is your one chance, Senator Cruz. And don't fuck it up. <laughs> and 
impossible. It's already happened. No, um, it should happen. Yeah. It does happen. I'm, I'm looking back at the photo and having so many memories. And um, being, I'm a guest judge this season, but... Um, Are you a guest? No, you're a regular oh, judge. Oh, I'm like a re- recurring judge. Yes, because re- you missed certain I ones? I missed a couple because huh. I had to go on a cruise for work, though. Yes, Dancing right. Stars. <laughs> I, was, I was really, it was, I was busy. But um, so many fantastic guest judges. Mark Jacob, can we say the people who yes, are coming? Yes, we can. We've already okay. announced Oops. it. Yes, yeah. Mark Jacob. Yes. Coming to guest judge. Um, Gigi the, Hadid. Gigi Hadid. Super fun sitting next to her for seven hours feeling old and ugly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They're like, do you need powder? I'm like, I need a facelift. <laughs> um, I need a whole new head, okay? If I'm going to sit next to her. Cole Richie, Blondie is right. on. Uh, David Debbie Sedaris. Harry. Yes, Amy Sedaris is on. Uh, yeah. Ross Matthews is there. Michelle Visage. Visage, um, yes. Um, so it's just, it's a great, you know, the family's all reunited. Yes. Um, now, I know we're getting, we're putting the cart before the horse, so to speak. That's all right. Um, but you have a fantastic new game show, and I only know about this because... I was there. <laughs> um, so tell us about Gay for Play. Gay for Play is a trivia uh, game show where two contestants get an opportunity to win over $5,000 in cash and prizes. There's a panel of celebrities who uh, help the contestants answer the question if the contestants choose right. to take that help. And, of course, Corson is one of the, uh, the celebrities. It's, it's a cross between... Match Game, Hollywood Squares, Deal or No Deal, and Family Feud. Right, yes. It's, it really is all of those things. And we've got these gorgeous dancers oh, who are, God, who are the come in. Oh, God, the Gay for Play dancers. The Gay for Play dancers who come in and out of commercials. But the show is super sexy. It's super cheeky. And I think we're going to be doing this for the next 30 I, years. I hope we do like 5,000 episodes. I love it. I hope they are wheeling us in there yes. each week. Yes. Disconnecting our oxygen. Yes. We shoot the show and then we go back to Palm Springs. Yeah, but it comes on. It comes on uh, uh, four eleven, which is uh, right. April eleventh on it's Logo a Monday, I think. Maybe it's Tuesday. Well, you have a phone. Look up April eleventh and, and put in your thing as a reminder to watch. It's really good. And, it's really good. And so many great people like. Um, Jerry O'Connell and Rebecca well, I, Romaine. Well, and, I don't think we've given those oops. names yet. <laughs> They're just there watching. Um, no, they were. They were in the press release. Yeah. They, oh, they were good. Yeah, they good. were. We're good. Yeah. I think. <laughs> you know, I'm um, going to see Rebecca later tonight. Are you? Yes, because, you know, we, uh, we, uh, uh, what's the show? Um, uh, Skin Wars. Skin Wars. We do a show with called Skin Wars. RuPaul's on every TV every show. Every TV show. That's in production right now. But, you know, this is a good thing for the kids to know, too, is that, you know, I've been, I have been doing this for many, yes. many years. You've got to get, set yourself up so that you can do a lot of different things. Think mm-hmm. Jane Fonda. Think... Quincy Jones, who has right. done everything. You know, a lot of the old thing was that you would choose one thing to do for your right. life, and you would do that forever. Right. But life isn't that way anymore. No, and that's you know? even, um, when I tell, like, fashion students, like, that's the same thing. It's like, you're going to probably have three different jobs. Yes, yes. So have some variety, and it's it's more fun that way. Well, but just being versatile, you know. I mean, you know a thing or two. But I sure do. Yes. Yes. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> It's just, and, and I think that's why I've been able to stick around for so long because, um, you know, I, I, I do music, I, I write, I produce, and um, right. I'm able to host. And, you know, it's important for young people to understand, uh, that to develop lots of different skills. And, you know, know thyself. Know the different areas of your consciousness right. that you can sell to people. Right. You know, like prostitution. Yes, yes. I've, I've dabbled in it. Yes. I did a little nude house cleaning. Who hasn't? Yeah, who um, hasn't? Uh, they, I, they didn't even pay me. Yeah. Uh, I left streaks everywhere. <laughs> um, just on the windows. Uh, I think we, um, yeah, here we are. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I just, and this is a little current events, and I knew you would have something really amazing to say about this because I've worked with this gentleman for a long time, and um, he's smart and creative and fun and very wise, and I thought, I got got this thing, you know, when you get, like, the news feed on your phone, and I'm just like, I don't care about news. Let me get to Instagram. Uh, (laughs) But it was a thing about gay programming being banned on all of um, the TV industry in China. Indonesia. Oh, and Indonesia, too. (laughs) 
Indonesia. No, it's China. China? Yeah, so there is no drag race in China. Yeah, that's terrible. You're probably going to be bootlegged into China. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's It'll good. It'll be huge in Beijing on yeah. the black market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they did. They, they, the Chinese government. I shouldn't be reporting on the news right now because I don't usually get things right. <laughs> but the basic gist was uh -huh. that the Chinese government issued this proclamation saying that um, no um, sexual abnormalities, no uh -huh. same-sex relationships. They lumped it in with all kinds of crazy sure. stuff. Basically, no gay stuff on TV. I was like, yeah. well, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Okay, because it's not going to be very fun without the gays. Well, no, that's an interesting point, because we talk about this with Gay for Play, the, the right. game show. Because, you know, in pop culture, it used to be that the mainstream, gay, uh, mainstream pop culture would get gay lingo 10 years later. Right. You remember when the girlfriend thing was, oh, girlfriend, that was right. like 10 years old for gay people. You right, know? yeah. That but now because of social media, it's, it's accelerated that pace. So Drag Race is responsible for, you know, Katie Couric saying, oh, you slay, you slay. Right, or, yes. Or on the, on the news they talk about, um, oh, she's throwing shade, you know. Mm -hmm. So with Gay for Play, we decided to take all of that gay pop culture vernacular right. back and show these bitches how it's really done. Thank y'all. You know? Right, that, yes. Yeah. All I have to say to that is... Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I thought you would like that news No, I bit. don't. No, I remember that because it, it, I, I thought it was just Indonesia. Yeah, no. But the truth is, when you try to keep things away from people, it becomes so, so coveted. They want it so bad. Right. Especially young people. And around the, the world... People for years have been, you know, downloading Drag Race in right. places where they couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. But that did not stop them. Like Oklahoma. <laughs> um, no, it's true. When, when Queer Eye first came out, they wouldn't air it in this certain area in Oklahoma. Really? It was in Tulsa. And they were, instead they were airing old reruns of Coach. And then I was just like, after six weeks of Craig T. Nelson, they'll be begging for the gays. And they were. <laughs> So your I think, point is correct that yes. you know, if you keep it away, it just it's it's the real world. There are gay people. Yes. Get over it. Get over We're it. Here. Right. Although I have a little thing for Craig T. Nelson. Do you? I think I do. I thought he was hot in poltergeist. Yes, he yes. is. Yes. And in Silkwood. He's in Silkwood. Super sexy in Silkwood. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No. He was my first daddy crush. Really? Was yeah. that really, honestly? I think so. I also had a thing for Jamie Farr and Mash. That's kind of like crazy. I like exotic. I like yeah. exotic. No, that's really crazy. I, to this, this day, to this day, I can't watch Married with Children without getting a little tingly because I have a thing. Really? For, for yeah. For, what's his name? Um, Ed, Ed, Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill, yeah. Yeah, I have a real thing for him. It happened. Did, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about at all. Do, you, do anybody have a thing for him? Like an inexplicable really, TV crush on someone that you probably shouldn't be attracted to. I, 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 I yeah. Yeah, very sexy for me. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes I feel that way about Ina Garten. Um, yeah, well, yeah, you know it's funny. Her voice is so calming. We're talking about the Barefoot Contessa. Yes, exactly. Something about her. I, you know, I, she because what happens is here in New York, when I'm in New York, right. um, she would come on after Judge Judy. So I watch right. Judge Judy, and right. I'd be in my bed. He's very busy. Very busy. Very busy. <laughs> and I would take a nap. To Ina Garten, right, right, Garten, Garten, yes, um, because of the sound of her yeah. voice, and she's because just slowly whipping butter I the whisk <laughs> over over a flame, yes, and talking about when her husband comes home, and I'm like, oh god, you gotta find another hobby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Husband, I don't know. I love her. Love yeah, what her. What are some of your other um, guilty pleasures on TV? What do you watch? Well, I do. I, I watch How to Get Away with Murder. Uh, yes, 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 and I, I love, of course, Judge Judy and Jeopardy. I, I always watch really? those. But okay. I've really been into the J-Lo um, Shades of Blue, too. Oh, the cop drama, right? The cop right? drama. It's very good. It's got a sort of a gay, um, it's got a gay side story. Really? It's very sexual. Ah. Yes, it's very good. We should try out for that show. My, why not? Yeah, there could be like a murder in a club, and yeah. we solve it. I love that. J-Lo arrests us because she thinks we're too close to the crime. 
time. And Wait a minute. Are, are you pitching a, co- a, a, a cop drama with the two of us? Yeah, yeah. Where we play cops and we yeah. solve crimes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That's great. Yeah. Hello. That's really we good. We could be undercover. Yeah. See, people like it. We just did an informal. I think so. We did a test marketing group for the world. <laughs> If you're watching, everybody wants that, CAA. Yeah. No, I um, think I... I was lo- begging for it, NBC. <laughs> um, a cop drama. It would be like the movie with... Um, oh, Partners, with Ryan O'Neal and... Um, who was it? The, the, uh, John Hurt? Yeah, no, I was thinking, like, the, this millennium. Oh, the, um, oh, right, yes. I don't um, know anything about... With yeah. um, the lady that's in all the oh. movies right now, Melissa uh, McCarthy. Oh, right. Oh, Heat? The, the Heat? heat. The yes. Heat. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, we could do a version of The Heat, but like the gay heat. Oh, the gay yeah. heat. Yeah. Oh. And we'd be in Miami, and we'd always have a fever. Oh, I... Lo- <laughs> and I yeah. would say things to you in the co- squad car. Do you want to get a donut? No, I'm so hot. <laughs> Not the heat. Like, all of our suspects would be hot Latino men. Ooh. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Anyway, well, no, enough no, but, of that. No, enough no. objectifying. But uh, speaking of that, you know, yes. the other thing that I'm obsessed with, and I don't think I've ever stopped being obsessed with okay. this, is Murder, She Sat Down and She Wrote. She Wrote. Yes. Cabot Cove. Oh, honey. Baby, I watch it every night. What I, channel is it on? It's on, I have it on DVD. Okay. But it is on the Hallmark channel. Okay. It's on the Hallmark channel every night. Okay, I love followed it. Followed by Heart to Heart. There's some great clothes and all that and fantastic cars. Like, everybody has like a 1974 Lincoln Continental Mark IV. In yes. Those shows. And they're they're yes. longer than this actual building. Yes. Um, and they have yes. a fake convertible top and a fake Continental kit. Anyway. I love it. Um, the Givenchy that, edition. The Givenchy or the yes. Bill Blast. Yes. We're the same person. <laughs> um, so now I'm going to do audience Q&A. And I'm going to go out in the audience like Sally, Jesse, Raphael. Oh, my God. That's great. Sans red glasses. I love it. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to touch the people. Oh, goody. Okay. Don't worry. <laughs> I have this errors and omissions insurance, which they say will protect me from a harassment lawsuit. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. You look like you have a question. I can read it in your eyes. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, no question? Actually, I think it's way too personal. But... What is the question? Um, First of all, where, what's your name and where are you oh, from? Yeah, what's your name and where are you from? Okay, I'm Carla, and I'm originally from Venezuela. Oh, oh. Venezuela. Hola, Chami. Chama. Chama. I'm very international. <laughs> I love that. I dated a lot of Venezuelans. Yes. <laughs> I, ha- I have three years in New York, and I consider myself a New Yorker because I love New York City. Um, but, yeah, my question is, just as many of us, I'm pretty sure, um, I'm in, in entertainment business too. And um, I do a lot of different things as well. And sometimes at this point in my career, at the very, at the very beginning, I must say, um, I think it's a little hard to pay attention into so many different subjects and still, because sometimes people will say, well, no, you, you have better to speak one thing and stick to that and be the best you know, in that one thing and only. But I think it's really hard when you live in New York and there's TV shows and theater and dancing and singing and stand up and so many other things. Um, and so, I don't know, I'm having a hard time trying no, to- No, I got it. You know, no. to know that I'm, I'm not just doing nothing into- No, you know, you know the whole theory of the 10,000 hours, you know, that whole thing. What it is is you have to find your own voice, whether you're an actor or a dancer or whatever you do, you have to find what your frequency is. And then you apply that to all the different things, whatever the job comes up. But that's why know thyself is so important. Find your own frequency, and you can apply that to many, many different things. We were talking about the Givenchy uh, Lincoln Continental. Right, yes. You know, this is a designer who lent his name and aesthetic and voice and frequency to an automobile, and it's the exact same thing. So you're on the right track. You just have to give yourself time. My 20s were all spent trying to please other people, but, uh-huh. you know, and it seems like such a waste of time. Focus on finding your own frequency, your own voice. Great answer. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Who else Thank has a question? Over. Oh, God. oh, you have a microphone already. Look at you. Oh. What's your name and where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, I'm Haley. I'm from Connecticut. Hi. Um, so I think a lot of us Drag Race fans, you know, can probably agree that Snatch Game is probably our favorite episode. Um, and I think I live for Adore Delano's Anna Nicole. I thought that was like my favorite 
But um, do you have any personal favorite, you know, characters that people came up with? Well, I thank you for that question. I love Snatch Game too. Uh, uh, Gay for Play is very similar to that. I loved when uh, Jinx Monsoon did uh, Little Edie from Grey Gardens. <laughs> that was one of my favorites. And when uh, Pandora Box did uh, Carol Channing was another one of my favorites. But it's, you know, Snatch Game is not as easy. It's probably harder than you would think because you have to embody the person and you have to think like them. And it takes a real crafty person to be able to play that game and also uh, stay in character. And if I, I guess if I were to do, and I'm going to ask you this question too. Oh, yes. If I were to do Snatch Game, I'm sure that I would impersonate... Latoya Jackson. Mm. Yes, and this is my Latoya voice. I'll tell you what. I actually heard her say these words. <laughs> I'm drinking champagne. <laughs> now, Carson, if you were to do Snatch Game, oh. who would you impersonate? Uh, I was going to say Latoya Jackson as well. Oh. No. Um, I actually, um, I would either do Nancy Grace. Why would she leave that baby in the car? Or... I would do um, Catherine Hepburn from On Golden Pond. Oh, Norman, you didn't pick a single berry, you old poop. Um, I have a couple in my repertoire. Um, those are mine, yeah. I love it. Thanks. Uh, you have the next question, I believe. What's your name and where are you from? Uh, yes, hi, my name is Miguel, and I'm from Puerto Rico. Oh, buenos dias, Miguel. Yeah, buenos Como dias. esta? Hola, señor. Muy ah, bien. bien. The shining <laughs> summer star of the Caribbean. Oh, hey. <laughs> bringing the heat, bringing the heat. So, um, one of the things that I love about the show is other than, you know, the, the glamour and the shade and, and the dresses and everything, uh, you take your time to teach us and, and, and the queens uh, more about being yourself, about knowing that, that sometimes you have family that are not your, you know, the family that you have given, but the ones that you choose. And also that you have to love, your, love yourself first, you know, beyond everything. So my question is, were you always planning to have that as part of your show? Is that something that came up? Or, or were you always, you know, trying to put that out there as well as the show and everything else? Oh, that's a lovely question, and I'm, thank you for asking it. You know, if you look at YouTube videos from of me from 83, uh, it goes back to 82, I have the exact same message in all of them. And I have, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a sort of a palette that I always say, you're born naked and the rest is drag. Everybody say love. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? That's always been my platform. And I grew up loving show business and knowing that I had to have a, a doctrine to present myself with. And that's what I chose at a very early age. I, I knew that I wanted love to be my platform. And so that, and self, and self acceptance. Because I got to tell you, you know, it's a daily. It's a daily practice, you know, um, you know, every day I meditate, I pray, I stretch, I do all the things that you, it, it takes to maintain a life on this planet. You know, we're all born with a, a GPS system and it's your job to learn how to navigate with it. Use your feelings and your intuition to guide you through this life and to navigate. And then you learn things along the way. But one of those things that I, I like to practice is, is self-love. And I have, and I, it's like every day it's, I wake up with amnesia because I have to remember to do that every single day. And that's, that's why my message is that. Because I'm not only reminding you, the audience, I'm also reminding myself. Can I get an amen? Uh-huh. I think we have time for one more question, one last question. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? Hello, my name is Larissa Gomez. I'm from Brazil. Oh, oh. All South America. To yes, South America. Yeah. To so congratulations, yes. Thank America. you. You said congratulations. <laughs> Obrigado. Um, and I have seen um, the, the seasons, and I have seen uh, transgender um, drags like uh, Monica Beverly Hills, and recently, I also saw a group of women doing drag in London. So I want to know your opinion about other genders doing drag, because yes, I'm a woman. <laughs> I also want to be a drag, but I'm always like, no, it's serious. I see it as a form of art. Sure. And, um, but I'm always afraid if I show up as a drag in a club, people are going to be like, you know, get out of here. First so. of all, you can't worry about what <laughs> people have to say. That's the first thing. What's your name again? 
Larissa, thank you for that question. The, you know, we, uh, we celebrate everyone who, is, who has charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent. And that is the only criteria. You could be whatever. But I've always, like I said, you're born naked and the rest of your act. Everybody, within the sound of my voice, is in drag. You are, you, you're born naked. And whatever you put on when you get out of the shower is your drag. So why not? If men, women, whoever. If you want to put on a character, if you want to put on a persona, why not? It's all there for you. You know, this, this world, it's really an illusion. So why not? wink, wink, nudge, nudge along with it, and do drag, have fun. I, I believe in using all the colors in the crayon box. So Larissa, go do drag, do drag. Fabulous. You don't care what people say, or what Hi. people you don't care what people say. What other people think of me ain't none of my GD business. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Amen. You you did good out there. Have you I, ever you did do a talk show, didn't you? You I, hosted. No, I, I have. I've been I've been on many, but yes. I haven't ever done one. Right. So, yeah. But we're probably gonna pitch that along with our cop drama. Absolutely. Um, and you're gonna be in it. Uh huh. Obviously. Both and yes. Marissa. Yes. Um, will be in it as well. <laughs> and because um, we're gonna be huge in Brazil. I mean, yes. they love us. You know, our show actually Drag Race is yes huge in Brazil. Mm. Huge. And I want to get down there. I want to go. Oh, there. God. It's the, have you not been there? I've been there twice. Oh, I, you got to go. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, you know, I'm busy doing the shows right, in right. L.A., so I don't get to. I did get to go to Australia for two weeks. Yeah, you just got back from Australia, just right? Got back from Australia. How was it? Did oh, you love it, oh, mate? It was, it was fabulous. What was it your was, favorite part? My favorite part was, uh, I actually was taking the train down to Mandra. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a nice ride down that way. Were you, did you go to Perth at all? Oh, yeah. I've been to Perth. I've been to the Indiana Tea Room. Oh, they're giving us the wrap it up. Uh -huh. So we're going to carry this conversation on on our periscopes. Uh, we're going to be upside down because we're going to be pretending we're back in Australia. Yes. So exactly. thanks for watching AOL Build. And give it up for our special guest today, RuPaul Charles. Thank you. And don't forget to watch the 100th episode tonight, RuPaul's Drag Race, on Logo at 9, 8 Central. That's right. And Gay for Play starting Monday, April 11th, also on Logo. Yes, Gay for Play. Right. Thank you guys so much. So much. Love it. Thank you. Boy, and he's going to be famous. So I grew up. Really? Yes. So I grew up with this idea that I was going to be famous. Right. And so I didn't know how, I didn't know what, but I was in children's theater and I did, you know, shows in the backyard, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then finally... You were like the little rascals. Exactly. Putting on productions. Do you, no, no, no. Sure. Yeah, yeah, all right. But that's exactly right. And uh, finally, after I left uh, high school, I got into a band. Okay. And we started doing, uh, you know, punk rock in, at the club and all that stuff. And uh, once we, as a gimmick, we all got into drag just to see, you know, right. just to do it. But the reaction I got when I got into, and this was gender F word drag. This right, is, right. you know, smeared lipstick, combat boots, and, you know, ratty clothes. It was ratchet. commentary. Ratchet drag. I think that's what the young people say. Yes. So uh, we did that, and the reaction I got from people was, was pretty incredible. I'd never had that reaction before. And I said, oh, I'm make, make note of that, you know? Right. And then one thing led to another, and years later, I, th I thought, well, I'll use this as my, as my vehicle. Right, and, right. And that's, that's really how it started. Fantastic. Yeah. And then how, did the, how did the music stuff happen? I mean, originally well, you were in a band, and then... You the have music like a number one single. Well, the music was always a part of my thing. Music has always been the place I found my refuge. You know, I was always a, a weird little kid who, um, who would read album cover liners. You know, and really? you know, all. Of, in fact, we just drove past Electric Lady Studios, which is right down here on on Eighth mm -hmm. Street, and it is legendary. And I get chills every time I, I go by there because so many right. great great albums were produced. In fact. Electric Lady is where I met Taylor Dane the first time. Who's who I have a duet with her on my Tell it latest. To my heart. Tell it to my heart. That only told half the story. Right, right. By the way, uh, but uh, she's we duet together. Uh, that's what duet means, you know. Um, 
the French for two. Yes, um, on my new album, Butch Queen, and uh, great song. Oh, but I met us, her at Le Electric Lady. But tell us about the new album, by the way. Butch Queen is out right now on Amazon and... Uh, uh, and is it like a real CD? Could you actually get something in the mail, or is it just a download and then <laughs> mysterious email from Apple saying you owe people you're going to be working with for the next 30 years? In fact, the producers of RuPaul's Drag Race, right. I, I met them right here in, in the East Village 30, no, 31 really? years ago. And I'm still working with them, you know? World of wonder, if you're World of wonder. wondering. Yes, if, if you're, you're wondering. You're worlding. Um, <laughs> how did Drag Race even start? I mean, like, where did the idea, did you have the idea? Did you take it to the producers? How does that process happen while we're, you know, walking down memory lane? Well, um, World of Wonder had been doing reality television for many, many years, and they wanted me to do it. Now, I thought it was, I didn't want to do reality because I thought it was mean-spirited. Now, this right. was in the 90s. They, they were doing reality TV. And um, I took some time away from the business. Like, from 99 till about 03, 04, I stepped away. I wanted to just live my life some. And when I came back, uh, they said, are you ready to do reality? Right. And I've never been ready to do reality, by the way, uh -huh. uh, because I'm, I love the fantasy, you know? Right. Um, so... Uh, Tom Campbell, who's over at World of Wonder, who I've known for many years also, came up with the idea of a competition reality show that is like a drag race, that is literally the, the, the pun of it being a drag race. Right. And it was Tom's idea. And then, um, but they had been after me for, to do something for many, many years. Well, it wouldn't be RuPaul's Drag Race without RuPaul, so I'm no, glad you did it. No, it would not be that, no. Um, now, and then did go, going even back further, I mean, when did you first, you know, when did you start in showbiz and how? And then you were a supermodel and then you had a talk show and then you had a recording. Like, you've had a lot of different careers within showbiz. So, like, when did you first get the itch and be like, hmm, I think I want to be an entertainer, which I think is what... Well, I like to refer to myself as an entertainer. Entertainer with yes. a T. Yes, exactly. See, when did yeah. you first start? Well, you know, when you when you talked about that, I was thinking about Jane Fonda and how she's had so many lives in one lifetime, and I love that idea because people live longer, you know, and so you you got to be prepared to do a lot of different things right. at at any given time. But you know, when I was um, a kid, my mother. Everybody told the story that when she was pregnant with me, she had seen a psychic, and that the psychic said, uh, it, a, it's going to be a boy. Do you have a side? Is that your good side? Okay. No, your part is on that side. Does I, that mean that's I know, your good but side? I'm more bald on the part side, so I buck that rule and I just do this side. Okay. Please, everyone, sit down. <laughs> that is too much. A standing ovation, Rue. I love it. Look at you. You've outgaged me with your outfit today. Yes, I'm mad. I certainly have. I'm mad. You're full on. I certainly have. Spring is busting out all over. Yeah. Have you ever seen that Leslie Egg Uggams thing on YouTube where she's singing that song but forgets all the words to I, it? I think I have seen Yeah, it's that. so good. Something for the kids. Something at home if you're at your computer. For the young people, look how young you guys are. I know. Uh, you're you just... just covered in afterbirth. <laughs> so young. <laughs> uh, welcome to our discussion with the one and the only RuPaul Charles. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm your host, Leslie Uggams. They don't know who Leslie Uggams is. I don't, I'm not even sure I know who Leslie Uggams oh is. Oh my goodness. She's you, a musical actress. She's a Broadway was musical she in actress. She was The Wiz. She was not in The Wiz. But you know what's funny is that, you know, Get was TV. She in the remake of The Wiz on no, NBC. No, she was not. Okay. But you know, uh, Get TV, Antenna TV, and Me TV, they're showing all those old shows. Okay. And so she was on Merv Griffin. I love uh, Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin, the other, uh, the other last week, and it was like oh. it was, it was like Lainey Kazan, Merv Griffin, uh, Phil, Phil Spector. Oh, and they Moms were, Mabley. And they would have those two people. They were like uh, health food people, but they looked so terrible. Yes, uh, exactly. Harvey and Marilyn Diamond, fit for life. Fit for life. Sorry, we're having a private conversation. Yeah, yeah. That people that lived in the '80s would talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway. Um, so, 100 episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race premiering tonight on Logo. I don't love Yes, that. you can applaud. How does that happen? I don't how know how that lasted happens. lasted for 100 episodes? Well, you know, I've been in show business for just under 300 years. Okay, I thought so. Yes. I thought so. And, you know, I, I tell this to kids all the time. And we were talking about this backstage. It's stick-with-itness. Stick yep. It's 
luck, but it's also ambition and not burning bridges. You know, I've been working this, this block here for a long time. And right. what ends up happening, especially for you young kids out there, is that keep in mind, the people look around you, those are the banner. <laughs> this is your one chance, Senator Cruz. And don't fuck it up. <laughs> Impossible. It's already happened. No, um, it should happen. Yeah, it does happen. I'm I'm looking back at the photo and having so many memories. And um, being, I'm a guest judge this season. But um, are you a guest? No, you're a regular. Oh, judge. I'm like a re recurring judge. Yeah, because you missed certain. I ones? missed a couple because huh. I had to go on a cruise for work, though. Yes, Dancing right. With the stars. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was really it was I was busy. But um, so many fantastic guest judges. Mark Jacob. Can we say the people who yes, are coming? Yes, we can. We've okay. already announced Oops. it. Yes. Yeah. Mark Jacobs. Yes. Coming to guest judge. Um, Gigi the, Hadid. Gigi Hadid. Super fun sitting next to her for seven hours feeling old and ugly. Yeah. Um, they're like, do you need powder? I'm like, I need a facelift. Ah! Um, I need a whole new head. Okay, if I'm gonna sit next to her. Cole Richie Blondie is right. on. Uh, David Debbie Sedaris. Harry. Yes, Amy Sedaris is on. Uh, yeah. Ross Matthews is there. Michelle Visage. Visage. Um, yes. Um, so it's just, it's a great, you know, the family's all reunited. Yes. Um, now, I know we're getting, we're putting the cart before the horse, so to speak. That's all right. Um, but you have a fantastic new game show, and I only know about this because I was there. <laughs> um, so tell us about Gay for Play. Gay for Play is a trivia uh, game show where two contestants get an opportunity to win over $5,000 in cash and prizes. There's a panel of celebrities who uh, help the contestants answer the question if the contestants choose right. to take that help. And, of course, Corson is one of the, uh, the celebrities. It's, it's a cross between Match Game, Hollywood Squares, Deal or No Deal, and Family Feud. Right, yes. It's, it really is all of those things, and we've got these gorgeous dancers who oh, are, God, who are the come in. Oh, God, the gay for play dancers. The gay for play dancers who come in and out of commercials. But the show is super sexy, it's super cheeky, and I think we're going to be doing this for the next 30 uh, years. I hope we do like 5,000 episodes. I love it. I hope they are wheeling us in there yes. each week, yes. disconnecting our oxygen. Yes. We shoot the show, and then we go back to Palm Springs. Yeah, but it comes on, it comes on uh, uh, 4 11, which is uh, right. April, April 11, 11 99. Right, right. Now, it is a download, but at DragCon, we yes. will have physical CDs. What Drag is this DragCon you're speaking well, of? Well, DragCon is a drag... Is a convention that is happening in Los Angeles, California, C City of Angels, um, on May... Seventh I believe and it's eighth. Seventh and eighth. That's a Saturday and, and Sunday. Yes, it's a huge convention. Last year was the first time we we had fifteen thousand people. Right. We have already more than doubled in ticket sales this year. I heard. I saw estimates like maybe like a million people are yes, going. Yes, uh, two million. Two people. million. Yes, yes. yes. We'll be attending. So it's going to be a big hit. What goes on there? They meet their favorite drag stars. It's they meet you. Exactly. It's it's the drag race experience brought to life. You remember Snoopy on Ice? Yes, Do you I remember love that? Snoopy on Ice. <laughs> yes. Well, this is like that, but it's drag queens, no ice. Right. It's like com. It's like Comic Con, but people aren't as quite as weird. Yes. Um, I'm looking at the season eight queens. Um, yeah. That's a fantastic photo, by the way. It, How fun and fresh and gorgeous. So, what are we? Um, what are we looking forward to this season? Well. <laughs> Funny question, because the thing is this, you put drag queens in anything, and it's right. going to take on a life of its own. And I True. get asked the question all the time, like, what to expect this season? Mm. Hilarity, Carson. Hilarity. Okay. Hilarity calamity. Mm -hmm. uh, all of the teas. Okay. Were, are all the be, teas, uh, none of the shade. None of the shade. And some of the shade. Some of the shade will be there. But it's crazy. This show has been going on for so long, 100 episodes. It's outrageous. It's crazy. You add drag queens to any situation. And, of course, their backgrounds as, you know, uh, lone wolves right. really comes out and, and brings a whole nother narrative to the situation. And I just love it. We need one it. of those at the uh, Republican debates just to spice things up don't a little we. bit. Why yeah. don't we? Why can't Alaska Thunder work there? Yes. 
Or, I know you can say bad words on this AOL business, but I just can't do it. I can't do it either. No. But Or why don't they do a lip sync for their lives? The candidates... Thank you. <laughs> Last night, we asked you to prepare a lip sync version of the Star Spangled